Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our midweek broadcast here at the Bridge Church. Um, if you are a regular with us, then we're just so glad that you've joined us again. If you are a visitor, if this is your first time, then we really hope that you will be blessed and encouraged and challenged a bit too by just joining us for this next 40 minutes, 50 minutes or so. My name is Chris Scott, I am the team leader here at the Bridge Church and it's my privilege to be able to host you today and take you through our time together. Before we, we crack on, I just want to just share a couple of thoughts and read something to you from Matthew chapter 5, um, which is the beginning of Jesus' first ever public preach or public message or sermon. Um, it's part of something we call the Beatitudes or the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes simply mean um, the blessedness. It, it actually means the blessed statements, the, the, the way that you can live a blessed life, I suppose. And uh, I was just struck again by just the simplicity of it, the directness of it, and just the power of Jesus' words as he sets out his mandate for a blessed life. Now, of course, the, the Sermon on the Mount carries on for, for three chapters, and there are many other times where Jesus preaches all kinds of things throughout his life. But this really is like the kickoff. It's the start up. It's what sets the agenda really for the rest of Jesus's life. And I want to read a few of these words and just, just um, maybe just pick out one or two things just to encourage you and to challenge you with today. So I'm going to start here from Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 1. And we read these words. Now, when he saw the crowds, this is Jesus, of course, he went up onto the mountainside and he sat down and his disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, don't forget, this is the disciples and the crowds. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, uh, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He goes on, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and then put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Now, this is so significant, A, because it's so simple, so profound and so powerful, but it sets out Jesus's mandate for how to live a fulfilled and a blessed life. And as I read through these verses again, uh, you know, recently, I was struck not so much by what was included in this list, but perhaps by the things that were not included in this list. Um, for most people in the world today, if you ask them to list out the eight things that make them blessed and make them happy, you will get things like, blessed are he when his bank account is full. Blessed are you when everything seems to be going well. Blessed are you when everybody loves you and thinks you're great. 
Blessed are you when all of your relationships are harmonious. Blessed are you when you get promotion. Blessed are you when you get the big house and the new car. It's really fascinating. None of those things, nothing to do with wealth or external circumstances are included in Jesus' list as he sets out this foundation for kingdom life and for living his way. No, they are actually more to do with the attitude of the heart. Blessed are you who, who are poor in spirit, he says. Um, he, it's, it's to do with our attitude to hardship. Blessed are you when you mourn. He talks about how we think about other people. Blessed are you when you show mercy. Blessed are you who are the peacemakers. And so the, the source of our joy, the source of of our fulfillment, the source of our happiness, if you want to use that modern term, but I, I prefer the, the word joy, really comes not from outside, not from what we do have, but it actually comes from somewhere deep within us. You see, we live our lives from the inside out, not from the outside in. When we live our lives from the outside in, we are at the mercy of our circumstances. We are vulnerable to the, to, the, to the wind and the waves of life which come and go. But when we live our lives and we, we derive our fulfillment from something deep within ourselves, something that is beyond the storm, something that is not affected or impacted by our current life circumstances, then we can live our lives with a greater sense of consistency. Jesus goes on just at the end of those Beatitudes and he says, you know, so you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. And, and you know, very often when we read the Bible and in, even in this Bible, as I read it, they are divided. There's a little title that seems to suggest that you're going on to another section, but it's not. They're totally related. For us to be salt and light, for us to... to um, to live the way that Christ wants us to live is just simply by living out that blessed life, simply by coming to Christ and, a, and no matter what our circumstances are, we derive our fulfillment, we derive our identity, we derive our circumstance, uh, sorry, our purposes from that place from within. Are you blessed? Am I blessed? Yes, we're blessed because if you're in Christ, you're blessed no matter what's going on in your life at the moment, no matter what tempest or storm you are experiencing at the moment, you are blessed if you are in Christ. Let me just pray with you this morning. Father, we just want to thank you for your word today. Thank you for this beautiful sermon that Jesus gave um, on the Mount of Olives. We thank you for the incredible relevance that that has to us even today with everybody searching, everybody's hunting for that, for that kind of key that will open up joy and happiness in life. But they're looking for it in external things. They're looking for it in those things that are circumstantial to our lives and not central to our lives. And I pray, Lord, that uh, as we just read these simple words again today, that we would realise that our blessedness comes from being in you, that no matter what our circumstances are, we can know the joy and the blessing of the presence of God, the presence of your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, today for anyone that's listening in, watching in today, that, that Lord, you would remind them of this, that you would come to them in the simplicity of these words and say, I am with you and my spirit is in you. Um, my heart, my desire is to bless you, is to bring you into a place where you can know the presence of God. You can know the purposes of God in your lives. And we thank you for that today, Lord. And pray that you will help us as we go through our time together um, on this broadcast. We ask this in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, we're going to head straight into the notices video, give you a bit of an idea of what's coming up in the bridge over the next few weeks. I'll be back in a second.
Okay, so there you have it. There's a lot going on, as we say, every week. Um, the last few weeks, we've been flagging up a couple of very important events that are coming up. Firstly, next week, we have Paul Gibbs with us um, at the bridge. He's going to be with us for the day. It's going to be a very, very um, important and significant day. And uh, it's something for each and every one of you. If you are part of the Bridge Church, this discipleship masterclass is for you. It's not optional um, unless you've got a really good reason for not being there. You really need to be there um, on Sunday. Uh, we are our part one is going to be in the morning. It's going to be part of our morning church, and that's from 10:30 at, at uh, Woodbridge High School. And then in the afternoon, we've actually built it as a five o'clock start. Um, but what we're going to suggest is. If you would like teas and coffees and cake and stuff at the beginning, we're just going to kick that back 15 minutes. We're going to ask you to come for 4.45, just so that we can get um, and maximise the two hours um, with Paul between 5 and 7. You do need to get booked in for that. You can do that via the QR code that's coming up on the screen now. And uh, we really want you to be there. We want, to, we want the bridge to be full that night. We really want this to be something that you take seriously. So that's happening next week. Then, of course, on the 5th of, of uh, June, Sunday the 5th of June, we have our street party. And that's going to be held here at the Bridge Church. And that is from 11 to 2. We need everybody to come down. This is an all rise event. It's a great opportunity. And off the back of what you're going to hear today, Peter Butts preach, um, it's a must again for every single one of you to come down, be part of that, to serve in whatever way that you can. It's just going to be three hours. We're going to have a great time together connecting with the community. And so we want you to be part of that. That is on the 5th of June. I um, just want to flag something up for you. On the 29th of May, there is something called Ride London, which is a national uh, bike riding uh, event uh, that's going to be in London on that day. And there's going to be a whole number of roads that are going to be closed from early morning right through to late afternoon. Some of those roads are in Woodford. Um, we would encourage you to check that out on www.ridelondon.co.uk. Um, I believe that Broadmead Road is going to be closed. Some of the upper parts of Woodford High Road are going to be closed. Manor, parts of Manor Road are going to be closed. Now, our understanding is that Charlie Brown and the lower part of uh, Chigwell roads all, all should be fine but we want to encourage you to check that out on that day so you don't get caught out and you're not going down a road that's going to be closed so that's Sunday the 29th of May just check it out on that government website uh, ridelondon.co.uk just to make sure that you can get into church on that morning okay so that's the 29th of May we're going to give you an opportunity to give uh, this is again something that we do every week. Giving is part of our covenant relationship with God. For those of you who are disciples of Jesus, those of you that are part of the church, um, this is an opportunity to give. I know many of you give already uh, electronically uh, by direct debit or by standing order. And if you do, that's great. If you don't, we would ask you to consider doing that because it's so, so easy for you to do that. It just becomes part of our natural life just to just to give to the Lord um, on a regular basis. And, and, it, and it also helps us with the admin of the finances. Um, but if you don't do that, here is your opportunity right now to give. Um, the QR code is going to come up. Now that QR code will take you to our church giving page. On that church giving page, you can um, activate the drop down menu and there are a number of options. You can give your tithes and your offerings. You can also, of course, still give to the Ukraine uh, appeal. We, we are still giving to the Ukraine appeal. That is still ongoing. We all know the situation um, is far from being resolved there and there's a lot of need. So if you'd like to give to that, you can do so. The Afghanistan appeal and of course you can give to the Excel Youth Hub um, which runs on a Thursday afternoon. So there's a number of options that you can do there. We're going to give you that opportunity to give right now and I'll be back with you in just a second.
So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving. Pray that God will just reward you, will bless you, will pour back into your life as you open your hands to him. So he will open his hands and will throw open the windows of blessing. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, when we honour God by bringing what we have and we give to him um, freely, generously, enthusiastically, um, the Bible says hilariously, then as we give to him, so God says, I'm going to throw open the windows of blessing. And just as we said at the beginning, um, he will bring us into that place of blessedness and uh, we can we can know the provision um, and the favour of God in our lives. Okay, so we are going to move into the Word of God. We were so pleased to have Peter and Irene Buck with us on Sunday. Peter and Irene are great, great friends of the church. Um, we personally have been good friends of theirs probably for the best part of 40 years. Um, they used to run the youth camps that Usha and I used to go to as teenagers and we've, we've kept in touch and they've been involved with the church. They come regularly to share and to minister. It's really an apostolic voice, prophetic voice into the house here at the Bridge Church and it was just a joy to have them for the weekend. And as you will find out, Peter really had something burning on his heart to bring to us, a real challenge to us um, as a church and a real challenge to each of us as individuals. And so I'm going to hand it over to him. He's going to bring this word on the mission of God. We are part of the mission of God. We are called to fulfill the mission of God. Nothing else matters apart from that. Let's go over to Pete now. Thank you, Peter. So I've been really exercised about this business of the mission of God and uh, so touched by it that uh, I find myself uh, moved deeply by the whole subject and so I find myself going back to preach on the mission of God. I think you're going to do the series at some time in the future. But this subject really just began to uh, touch uh, my heart. And the verse that uh, has, has stirred me up are the words of Jesus from John 20, verse 21. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. As the Father has sent me, in the same way that the Father has sent me, with the same message, with the same mission, huh, I'm sending you. It's very fascinating to me that uh, books have been written, conferences have been held uh, over centuries on this subject, Missio Deo, the mission of God. But here's a fascinating thing. The word mission hardly appears in the Bible. The word mission, from which we get our word missionary, doesn't appear at all in the King James Bible. The King James Version doesn't include the word mission. It appears uh, once in the New King James Version. So even in the updated uh, authorised version, the New King James, uh, it only appears once, the word vision. And even in the modern translations, like the Good News Bible, it only appears four times, the word mission. And yet we're constantly talking about mission. So where do we get it from? Where do we get this idea of mission from? Why is it so big uh, on our agenda? Well, it's quite simple, really. The word uh, mission is Latin. It comes from the word missio or mitere, which is the Latin word. I came across this great quote in this brilliant book. And, uh, yes, yeah, a really good book, this one. And uh, I found this quote in it. It says this, The word mission has been co-opted by the military and marketing and public relations 
Every hotel has a mission statement on the wall. Every business seems to have a mission statement promising good service. But the word mission means sent. That's fascinating. The word mission means sent. It comes from the Latin mitere, used to translate the Greek apostoline. It gives us the word apostle. The word apostle means the ones who are sent. So we find the idea of God sending right through the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament, particularly in the New Testament. John 3.16, the most well-known verse in the Bible, God sent. God sent on a mission. God sent with a purpose, His only Son. Right through the Scriptures, particularly in John's Gospel. In John 17 uh, alone, seven times it mentions sent. And in John 20, 21, the resurrected Christ says, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And so what we're talking about when we talk about mission, the mission of God, we're talking about being sent by God. We're talking about being sent with a purpose, sent on a mission. There's a related word in the New Testament. It's the word ambassador. Has a similar connotation. And so Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, he says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. He doesn't say, I am because I'm an apostle, he says now we are ambassadors for Christ. He repeats that in Ephesians 6.20. And here's another quote. If I wrote the book now, I'd include this one, because it's so powerful. We're ambassadors whom Christ has sent forth to negotiate with people in regard to their reconciliation to God. You see, here's the purpose. Here's the mission that we are called to. This is what Jesus was saying when he said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And so in Luke's gospel, what does Jesus say? He said, I am come to seek and save that which was lost. Here's the mission. Here's the purpose. This is what I am about. This is what I am called to. This is the purpose of the mission. And as that's my mission, so I am sending you on the same mission. So he says, the Holy Spirit has come upon me. Huh. Why? That I might bring release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to preach the gospel to the poor, to, 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 to bring the word of release and comfort and strength to those who are in need. We're ambassadors. We've been sent to represent uh, the king. It's really interesting. Uh, uh, here's a quote here. Uh, the word ambassador means to deliver a message for another. So we're sent with a message. As an ambassador uh, is is a minister of the highest rank employed by uh, a king or state leader to manage his concerns, to represent the dignity and power of the sovereign. Fantastic, isn't it? And we are ambassadors for Christ. We are sent to do what he would do if he were personally present. We are to make known and to explain and declare the terms on which God is willing to be reconciled to people. This is, this is really serious stuff. We're not to negotiate any new terms, nor to change those terms which God has proposed, nor to follow our own plans or devices, but we are simply to explain, urge, state and declare the terms on which God is willing to be reconciled. 
We are to seek the honor of the sovereign who sent us and to seek to do only his will. We do not promote our own welfare nor seek honor, dignity or payment, but we go to transact the business which the Son of God would engage in if he were personally on the earth. Sorry about reading that long statement, but it is so powerfully declaring what our purpose is. This is what we are about. This is what we are called to. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Jesus declares so clearly uh, that he has been sent. When he talks about the Spirit of the Lord being upon him, he doesn't say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me so that I get goosebumps when we sing worship songs on Sunday morning. He doesn't say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me so that I can feel good or have a happy time. He says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is the purpose to to fulfill the mission. The coming of the Spirit is all about the mission, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit that causes us to be able to do mission. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those that are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And in my spirit, I am grieved because I feel that COVID knocked all the stuff in out of our sense of mission. And we closed up and we closed in and we got, we got taken up with survival and getting through. And we lost this sense of call and mission. We lost this mission of God. We lo- lost this sense of purpose, of what we're here for, of why we're here. Because we got taken up with the stuff all around us. And it's like, I, I feel like God is just coming to stir us up again. And please hear me, I could, you know, I've preached for years, I said it in the prayer meeting, I've been preaching for over 50 years, most Sundays, and and I can preach on this stuff, but I don't want to do that today in the sense of making you feel uncomfortable or guilty, I want to stir you up and I want the Holy Spirit to come and do a work in our hearts because I need it too that this is what we've called to and for. This is, this is why we're here. The mission of God, the purpose of seeking and saving that which is lost. You see, Jesus was sent. Just keeps saying it. I put, I, I'm not going to read all the scriptures. That's why I've done a PowerPoint today. Look at all those scriptures. 1 John 4, 14. We have seen and testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Jesus was sent mission, purpose, seeking and saving lost men and women, being the Saviour. And he says, I send you. 300 times in the New Testament, the word sent appears. So when I said the word mission doesn't appear in the, eh, much in the New Testament, it does because that's what this word entails. That's what it infers. It's part of this word sent, sent with purpose, sent as an ambassador, sent to, 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 to minister, sent to represent the king. The mission of God. Sent. Sent. Jesus was sent. The disciples were sent. John the Baptist was sent. Mark 1 verse 2. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. I send. There it is. With purpose. On a mission. What's the mission? to bring the kingdom of God, to reconcile men to God, to preach the gospel, to share the truth about Jesus. The twelve. 
And he ordained 12, Mark 3, verse 14, 15. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them out. The 12, their purpose was to be with him, to learn from him, to be discipled and trained by him. I'm sure this discipling thing next week will be all about stirring us up to get involved with with doing the work uh, and the purpose of the mission of God, which is to take hold of people and to go and make disciples. So Chris has told you to come. Don't come if you ain't willing to get touched and changed and embrace this call, this commission this sentness. If you're not willing to be obedient to the words of Jesus, this is serious stuff. This isn't fun this morning, sorry. Yeah. As the Father sent me on a mission to win lost people, so I'm sending you on a mission to win lost people. Choose his 12 to be with him to learn from him, but not just to have a party, not just to have good meetings. Peter got it wrong, didn't they? They were having a brilliant meeting and the glory of God came. And Peter said, oh, it's good here. Can we build a a, a tent so we can stay here? No, you can't stay in the worship on Sunday morning. Why? Because you're sent. We're sent. It's what it's about. This is the mission of God. (laughs) The 12 were sent. The Holy Spirit was sent in Luke 20, 24, 29. Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit. He's the one who comes to enable us to fulfill the purpose. He comes upon us suddenly. And these guys who were frightened out their wits in that upper room in in Acts chapter 2, are filled with the Holy Spirit and then they're out in the marketplace. And what are they doing? Missio Deo. The mission of God. Declaring the truth about Jesus. Causing people to come and give their lives in surrender to Jesus. Missio Deo, the purpose of the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's all tied up with the winning of the loss, with the, with the redemption of the world. You know, even Moses gets a sent one. In, uh, in Acts 7, uh, 35, it says, and God has sent this one. <laughs> Moses is talking about. So even in the Old Testament, there's this sense of the mission of God calling people to come and, uh, and to bring release to the captives and to set people free. Uh, and then, of course, Paul, he's just sent, sent, sent. The guy's totally sent. He just knew he was, you know. And in Acts 13, 4, we, we read of, of him being sent out from Antioch. And it says in Acts 13, 4, then though these indeed sent out by the Holy Spirit, sent out, going on mission with purpose, going to declare the truth that Jesus has proclaimed, going with this message. And then, of course, the whole thing of ambassador uh, uh, that uh, Paul speaks about for himself. And then, of course, actually what happens now is it comes to us. So 300 verses in the New Testament talk about being sent. Now it comes down to me and you. And only the Holy Spirit can stir up our hearts to change us. I I can make you promise to do evangelism, but it don't count. I've, I've been in meetings like that. I've done that kind of thing. Holy Spirit, please come and touch our hearts with this truth about mission. Please, come Lord, come touch my heart. Come touch my friend's heart. Jesus, Jesus prayed in John 17, seven times, can't count, seven times Jesus used the word sent in that chapter. 
And in verse 18, he says this to, to the Father, As you have sent me into the world, <clears throat> even so I have sent them into the world. This is the word of Jesus. Jesus is saying, I'm sending you. I'm sent you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is every believer. There aren't different levels of believer. There aren't those who just come on Sunday morning. There aren't those who just come once a month on Sunday morning. There are only people who are sent. Huh. As the Father sent me, I send you. Every believer... Ordinary people you say, oh yeah, but I can't preach, I don't know the Bible. That's got nothing to do with any of it. You are sent. So we've got this fabulous bloke called Ananias who appears once in the New Testament in Acts 9, verse 17. Huh. And he's the guy who went to pray for Paul. He was an ordinary believer. We don't read about him again. But he's going about his business and the Holy Spirit speaks to him and says, go to the street called Straight, that must be Straight Street, and go and pray for a guy called Paul. Go and lay hands on him. Go, I'm sending you on a mission to go to the Apostle Paul. Said, but I've heard all about him. He, he, he persecutes Christians, puts them in prison. You know, and God says, well, whether he does or doesn't, I'm sending you to him. Huh. And so this is what he says when he gets to, to, to Paul. He says, The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you in the way in which you came, has sent me to you, that you might see and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ordinary believer. You ever heard of the peculiar people? Yeah, who's heard of the peculiar people? Yeah, I can see, yeah, looking at you, I can understand you've heard of the peculiar people. The peculiar people were an Essex-based working-class move of the Holy Spirit at the end of the 18th century. They were ordinary people. But God came and moved powerfully. 120 churches were were, were planted from, from uh, South End, right up the Thames Estuary and even over the river. And uh, the stories are quite remarkable. And there's one great story, I love this story. There was a farm labourer working in the field in Rayleigh. And as he's digging the ground, the Holy Spirit sends him on a mission. Holy Spirit says, go to Canvey Island. There's a woman, an old lady, number nine High Street, I think it was. Go and knock on the door. She's dying. Go and lay hands on her that she'll be healed. And uh, the guy, of course the guy says, well, how am I going to go? I don't know how to get there. I haven't got a car. There's no buses. What do I do? Well, he doesn't ask any questions like that. He goes to his boss and says, the Lord's told me I've got to go to Canby Island to pray for an old lady who's dying. And he walks all day, seven miles to Canby Island, finds the high street, number nine, finds that there's a lady upstairs in this, in this uh, an old lady dying in this, in this room, goes upstairs, lays hands on her. She's instantly healed. Her whole family come to Jesus because this man has been obedient with this mission. And a peculiar people's church is planted on Canvey Island. As the Father sent me, so send I you. That's what God wants to do with you. I don't know if you'd like a nice prophetic word today, but that's the prophetic word I'm carrying. That God wants to send you. He wants to touch your heart, 
So, well, I'm too old. I don't know enough. That, that's not for me. Well, this isn't an option. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you, Jesus said. He didn't say unless you're too young or too old. Or He said, this is the mission. This is what you signed up for. This is what you've become a part of. Huh? So you come next week, you're going to hear it. The commission is this, go and make disciples. It's the same thing. This is the mission. This is the purpose. God wants to send us on this mission. He wants us to go. You see, it's our purpose. Uh, <laughs> Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? That's a rhetorical question. They're not going to. Uh, they're not going to go. They're not going to. Uh, uh, they're not going to hear unless we get stirred up and understand that we are sent. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good joy. Now this this really got under my skin. This bit. I looked at the parable of the sower. I was reading through Matthew. Uh, in my daily readings and I came to the parable of the sower and I got stuck and uh, it talks there about the seed it talks about the word of God it said some fell on the good ground and yielded fruit indeed 100 and 160 and 130 and Jesus in the interpretation he says, that sown on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands, who also bears fruit. If I asked you if you were the good ground that the word of God comes to, I wonder how you'd answer this morning. Because it would be a valid question for me to say, show us your fruit. Because it says there, if the seed, if the word falls on good ground, it bears fruit. So here's a challenge for me. Where's my fruit? Where's the people whose lives I've touched? Where's the people who've been changed by the encounter as I have been sent and gone? Who? You've not chosen me, Jesus said, I've chosen you and ordained you, purposed that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. I, I felt, I've been reading some of these old heroes. Uh, I've read about Moody and Finney and I've just finished reading about Wigglesworth again, a book called Apostle of Faith. He just was caught up with the Missio Deo. He just was caught up with the purpose of God. Do you know, he stayed plumbing till he was 50. And you know why he stayed plumbing? Because it meant every day he met with people and he could get about the business of the mission of God, which was to see lost people saved. And he wasn't happy if he didn't see two or three people saved every day. This is nothing to do with church leadership or preaching at conventions or going to a big conference or writing a book that tells you how to do it. This is about a man who's just totally caught up with the, with the mission. He's heard the words of Jesus and they've touched his spirit. As, as, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. He said, right, I'm sent. So he goes. And he had opportunities to preach and to teach here, there and everywhere. He had opportunities to become a church leader. Uh, but he stayed a plumber. Why? Because it kept him in touch with the mission. Whoa. I read that book and I cried. For the people that were touched. People whose lives were transformed, the homes that he went into, the courage that he had to just go and see the kingdom of God come. So th this challenge here, the challenge is where are you? You might not come again after this. Because see, seed that's good ground, if you're good ground, you bear fruit. 
maybe if there's no fruit, we need to examine. Well, this is serious. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I want the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts. So I read the parable of the sower again. Matthew 13, 22 is the interpretation of the seed that falls amongst thorns and the thorns come up and choke the word of God. And that sown into the thorns, Matthew 13, 22, is he who hears the word and the cares of this world, Holy Spirit, come, you do it, because the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. You know what the Lord said to me? We've got churches full of people where the thorns have choked the life of God. Whew. Listen to what it says in the NLT. The seed represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things. So no fr fruit is produced. We're so busy and taking up with other things. And, and I've, I've read that the week after we'd had a new shower put in. <laughs> and we spent two and a half thousand pounds, which, which was a good, really good price to have a, a really nice shower. But, but it dominated our lives for a week while it was done and dominated our lives for a week afterwards when we were sorting out and getting everything in place, the cares of this world, the worries of life, you know, and we're taken up with other things, the desire for other things. Uh, the same week, we had a connect group. We call our small groups um, connect groups. Life links is old fashioned. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we had a connect group, and we sat there before we you know, began and we had a, we always start with a drink and whatever. And half the people in, in the connect group, you know what the conversation was? They had been to see Downton Abbey. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. We've, got, we've been to Downton Abbey. We went last week. Couldn't resist it. <laughs> nothing wrong with going to Downton Abbey. But in the connect group, we weren't talking about the people that we talked to about Jesus that we've been taken up with the mission of God, we talked about going to the film to see Downton Abbey. And our conversation is about football and this and that and the other. And where'd you get that dress from? And I like your hair and whatever. Uh, can't say that to Len, but anyway. <laughs> or Vic. <laughs> now, can you hear me? Because this, this, is, this is what God said to me, and I, I felt so convicted myself. As the Father sent me, so send I you. Yeah, but the cares of this world, uh, they choke. You know, it's been really tough these last two years, and we got taken up with, 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 with just surviving. And, you know, uh, and there's nothing wrong with anything I've said. There's nothing wrong with going to watch Spurs. In fact, it's a joy and a pleasure. I did mention it, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it except that what I see in our churches is these things dominated our lives and activities so we can't get involved. So volunteer lists, huh, signing up to be involved in stuff, the thought of getting involved with some of the mission on June the 5th, 
and actually confronting some people who are desperately in need. We're in a world, we're in a society, we're, we're living amongst people with mental health problems, with really serious broken lives. And the, it's, it's, it's worrying about where we're going on holiday and whether it might be cancelled. Please go on holiday. We're, we're going on holiday. But, but can you feel what, what I sense God was saying to me? To challenge us. The evidence is it's very simple. If it's good ground, you're fruitful. So who are you touching? Who are you reaching? I was, I was really blessed the other week because we've been trying to reach this 84-year-old guy next door. And... Uh, we're working on him and his wife and uh, we've lived there for five years and we, we ain't got him through yet, but it, it, we've had some really good chats. We, we pray for him regularly, I mean, with him there. Uh, and we said, cool, I always feel good after I'm prayed for, so we're just trying to, you know, whatever. So this week, uh, or last week, Irene had a chat with him and he asked if I would take his funeral. <laughs> that actually is a real <laughs> breakthrough. Yeah, so where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? Where's the evidence of, of, of you being on the mission? Because you're being disobedient to Jesus if there's no fruit and you're allowing the cares of this world and the worries of life. And boy, they are there. <laughs> We're taking up with cars. I've written things. Cars, houses, sport, children, making money, pleasure. You know, in the old days, we used to have these consecration services and dedication services. And we used to sing these songs, I surrender all. Remember that? I surrender all. But there was something about that that was really important, you know. I remember George Bev Shea, uh, Billy Graham's song uh, uh, soloist singing, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I, I'm not sure that many believers could sing that because we want Jesus, but we also want our Sky TV and our nice car. And there's nothing wrong with that. And God wants you to have it. Please hear me. But it's the place it holds because... Where's, where's the mission of God in your time and attention? <sighs> oh. Okay, I'm going to finish. But there needs to be a response. So in the Old Testament, we got this uh, challenge. We got Isaiah in the presence of God in Isaiah chapter 6. And he hears the voice of God. And this is what it says. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Wow. Wow. I hear, I hear the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? He was, God was grieved and disturbed by the state of the nation, the brokenness, all the stuff that was happening. God was looking for people who would go on his mission and, and take up the challenge of going to meet the broken, to restore those who were fallen, to, to work and, uh, and give themselves to, uh, uh, to the harvest. Whom shall I send? Who will go on the mission of God? Who will go on our mission? 
Very fascinating, uh, that verse. It says, who will go for us? Here we've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all together. This isn't just a, a whim or a thought. This is this is this has gathered the attention of, uh, of the Godhead in his fullness, in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he's looking for people who will go on mission. And Isaiah hears this word. And this, just this brilliant response. And he says, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Jesus says, so Father sent me, so send I you. Yes, but I, I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to get that. I've got to sort this out and we're very busy. And As the Father has sent me, so send I you. Then I said, here am I, send me. <laughs> I'm 74 this year. But my, my response is, is not, well, it's retiring age or whatever. It's a response to the, this call. And it says, here am I, send me. I want to win some people for Jesus. I want to seek and save those who are lost. I want to get taken up with the mission of God. I want to go and make disciples. I want to see the kingdom of God come. I've cried more in the last two years as I've watched the brokenness in our nation. And COVID has just brought to the surface what was underneath all the time. And you and I, you and I are the ones with the answer. Boris hasn't got it, nor has the other guy. It's not in politics or business or in the National Health Service or in vaccines. It's in God. And he's calling us to go. Your neighbours, your workmates, where you are, where he's put you. He said, I'm sending you. I'm sending you. This is the mission of God. And you're part of it. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. Take this truth. And make it live in our hearts. Do a work in us today, Lord. Come, break into our lifestyle, break into our plans, break into our decision-making processes, break into, uh, into, in, into the way we live, God, with, with a passion for your mission to seek and save those who are lost. The mission of God. The mission of God. God, send us. Send us. I don't know how you need to respond today. I don't know what to do now, except leave you with the challenge. Brilliant. Uh, what can I say? Um, I think Peter hit the nail on the head there. There's an awful lot going on in our lives at the moment. I know there's an awful lot going on in the world at the moment. There's so many things that we need to think about, that we need to consider, that we need to work through and navigate through in life. But here's the deal. We, we must never, ever um, allow ourselves to be drawn away from our primary purpose. And if you are a Christian, if you are a disciple of Jesus, then your primary purpose in life is to fulfill the mission of God, is to take the good news and live the good news and be the good news to the people that are in your world, the people that are in your networks of relationships. And I said this on Sunday as we, as we rounded off, you know, um, everything you do in life is context. 
Your primary purpose is to fulfill the mission of God. Where you do that is context. Whether you are an accountant, a policeman, whether you're an office worker, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a student, whether you're still at school, whatever that is, it is just context. God has placed you in that environment so that you can be salt and you can be light to the people that are around you. And so whatever happens and, and no matter how busy life gets and no matter how many pressures there are that come in on you, please, please never ever forget, never ever lose sight of and never lose hold of, never let go of the truth and the reality that your primary purpose here is to serve the living God and to fulfill his purpose and to pass on the good news of Jesus to those that are around you. So that's a real challenge. We had a whole bunch of people, we had a lot of people respond on Sunday. Maybe 30 people, 30, maybe 40 people came down the front, not, not for prayer, not for ministry. They simply came to say, yes, yes, Lord, I want to, I want to be the mission of God. I want to be fulfill the call. I want to be the sent one, the one that you've sent into my world to bring the good news of Jesus. So that's the challenge for you, and that's the challenge for me today. Thank you, Peter, um, for bringing that to us. Well, I think we're done. Um, just remains for me to say to you to stay connected, as we do every week. Uh, the slide will come up. You can stay connected uh, via our YouTube channel. You can stay connected via Instagram. We are trying to get that up and running a little bit more now. You should be getting a, a bit more regular um, uh, posts now through our Instagram. Uh, but we just want you to stay connected in whatever way you can. Life links are an absolute essential. We uh, would encourage you to be part of a small group network uh, because that's where you build relationship. That's where those those um, accountable relationships, where we can grow together, it's where we can learn together, it's where we can walk together through the ups and downs of life. It's so, so important. And if you're just a Sunday person, then we just want to encourage you, you need more than that. It's not good enough to just come on a Sunday for a weekly top up. You need to be part of a vibrant community. So we'd encourage you to do that. You just need to phone into the bridge. And, and ask us and we can get you connected up with Simon and he will get you connected up with a life link. Okay, so that would be great. If you are local, please just start coming along. Let's let's get, you know, we're pretty much through most of the COVID thing now, unless you've got a really good reason, maybe, you know, you are vulnerable and you need to stay at home, then we want to bless you with our broadcast. But, uh, you know, for most of you now, we should be coming back on a regular basis getting involved in church, being there on time, being there early, ready and raring to go on Sunday. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Um, have a great, great week. The Lord bless you and uh, we will see you next week. Take care.